Good morning, friends. It's Carrie here from Flowers for Dreams. Thank you so much for joining us for another DIY floral session where we will design floral arrangements together week by week. Let's open up what we've got this morning. These lovely purples and blues um, are dendrobium orchids for our focal flower. Aren't these special? I love when we get tropical flowers like orchids. You want to take some extra precautions to keep your tropical flowers away from the cold. So no cold temps for those guys. We've got these lavender tulips. Good meat and potatoes of our arrangement. Oh, beautiful. This Tweedia. Mine isn't open yet. So if you're wondering, like, oh, it's not very showy yet. Like a lot of our flowers that are really fresh and they've just been in the cooler, um, they're really closed. So um, your Tweedia may not be open yet, but in a couple of days it'll pop open to these really pretty pale blue clusters of flowers with this kind of lamb's ear velvety foliage. This is a fun one our blue carnations. These are stem dyed. Switch it up a little bit, something a little more funky. I'm not always into stem dyed flowers, but for some reason I love carnations right now. So let me know what you think. Do you love carnations or do, are they not your favorite flower? They last absolutely forever, which is why I love them. Also got our purple um, aster. Took me a second there to pull that out of my brain. Um, this is in the daisy family. And they have these really pretty, this is um, got like these little yellow centers. It's almost like a native um, wildflower weed, which if you know me, you know I love wildflowers. I can be found stopping my car on the side of the road to pick wildflowers. Sometimes wildflowers, you know, they do not last after you pick them. They're gonna droop really quickly, but obviously this is a commercial stem that's um, been grown to be used in forestry, but its native plant is really similar, and you'll see that along the side of the road in the Midwest, which is kind of fun. Um, this is our acacia foliage, and this is in the same family as our mimosa, which we had last week. It's also got this really interesting scent when you start to cut in to the foliage. We've got a good amount of foliage. I'm using our mason jar vase today to arrange it, but if you're using something else at home, that will work just fine. Nice, about four inch opening, I'd say, will work well for this style, but we really have a lot of flowers so we can go big. Um, with our, our design, really leave some room for things to open up. And I think this particular palette is a little more edgy um, with, the two, with the orchids and the carnations. But we'll start by greening our vase. Pull out your acacia. This particular foliage is pretty um, uh, stemmy or, yeah, I don't know what the word, leafy. I guess that's the word I was looking for. And we don't want any of this stuff to get in the water. It tends to be kind of crumbly and it does pollute the water. So after we're done designing today, go ahead and change the water right away to refresh it. You'll probably get a little floaties in there. Um, but for your acacia foliage, just strip off anything on the bottom of the base, bottom of the, excuse me, bottom of the branch. I'm gonna create some levels. Maybe just do a little height variation. You could even stem split this. So if you'd like to get a little bit more out of your arrangement, or maybe you're like me and you like to make little companion arrangements, you could always save a little small piece and put it in a bud vase if you have something left over. I like to try to get the most out of each stem. Um, and you may even have some really fun 
purple tops to your acacia. I'm gonna let it be a little drapey. We've got a lot of foliage, so I think we could go big, but oh, look at that. So pretty. I love that ombre color. It's almost a eucalyptus-y color, colored stem with that sort of blue-green color of the, the base leaves. And then the tips you'll sometimes get um, these really pretty purples. Now, you normally I would stem split all my stems, but maybe try something different this time and see if you can um, keep some of your branches together to maintain the natural shape of the foliage. And that's kind of a fun practice to sort of preserve the original natural expression of the stem, which I like to do sometimes. Sometimes we wanna bend nature to our will and get a stem to go exactly where we want it to go, but it can be fun to just let go every once in a while and let nature, let the stems kind of be in their natural shapes, spreading some of this purple foliage too out around. I always like to kind of check out every side, so don't neglect the back side of your arrangement. We do also see a little bit more drop with acacia foliage. So this might be one that you want to tend to. All right, I've got, I really did get a lot in my bundle. So I'm going to add this last purple, big, beautiful purple stem. And then save some of the rest of my foliage for my design. If you've got a lot of the purple like I do, you could even try color blocking everything to one side and play with these beautiful ombre colors. Have it kind of move from purple to blue green on one side. All right, I'm gonna spin this around because I think I like this as the front. And you do want to think about every side, if this is going to be viewed from all sides. Maybe this is going on your dining room table. Think about the back. Think about putting a few flowers on the back side. I'm such a sucker for Instagram and I love photographing my flowers. Um, so every week after I I design something, I'll photograph it and put it in my, my little photo album. Um, so I do a lot of times design front facing because they photograph so well. Let's add our asters next. Still pretty closed. Not a lot of action just yet. You can clean these up if you'd like. Sometimes I'll pull off some of these just lower leaves the more leaves we pull off, the more hydration goes to our blooms. I don't wanna take away all of the foliage because I think it's pretty and fluffy, but you may, if you get a piece like this, you could either stem split it or pull off some of these lower branches. It's always a little sad taking off the blooms from the lower part of the stem if you're not going to use them but we want to give our energy or the energy of the flower to the most beautiful part which is a lot of times the tips let's maybe do a little spinny this time divide this one get a little bit more out of it pluck all those leaves off for my front piece 
I'm gonna anchor sort of a belly button flower. So for these, I you know since they're closed, I do want to have most of them up and out, and they'll really just ooh, extend themselves. But you can also try maybe anchoring one element a little bit lower in your design. It'll feel very grounded and um, call it the belly button flower. Learned that from another florist. So it sort of feels like that just central anchor holds everything together. I'm gonna even get a little crazy here and throw some a, a little gesture over here to accentuate this beautiful purple foliage. So you can use as much of your aster as you like. I still have two more pieces. My back looks a little sad over here. So this is beginning to look sort of like a beautiful wild summer arrangement and it almost would be if it weren't for our really fun orchids and blue carnations looks very wild using this piece that i stem split so this is my longer stem I also find it's a good, it's good to practice those techniques because then you start to learn how to preserve some stem length. I've got one more aster. I think I feel good about where my asters are right now. Actually, you know what? Maybe one, one more right here, but I don't, I don't want to overwhelm it. So I'm going to peel back some of the blooms. So, oh, beautiful. I've got my purple acacia tips, my purple aster, and it's kind of a loose, beautiful, wild, flowery look to it. I always try to pick flowers that are gonna last as long as possible for you. So um, our asters are one of those that just, they go on and on and on. All right, I think let's add our tulips next. Lovely lavender tulips. Ooh, I got kind of a double. That happens sometimes in the springtime. If you've ever gotten a double egg, that's what I equate it to. It's like that time in spring when everything is really virile and fertile. I always anchor my tulips lower than you think you would. Maybe like an inch or two lower because they will grow. I'll add about an inch of stem height. So I'm gonna tuck them in. They'll feel kind of low and almost like you can't see them. And right now they're pretty tightly closed. I love showing how to reflex a tulip because um, it creates a beautiful shape with the flower, but you have to wait till they're softer. So if you do want to try that technique, wait a little bit till your um, tulips have softened up. Mine's just very firm. And then pop open the petal with your thumb ever so gently. I'm gonna leave one longer stem here. sort of, again, accentuate that side that's got all this purple on it. Draw the eye up just a little bit with that, again, another just gesture of upward purple. Let's add our orchids next. Ooh. Um, before adding them, just inspect every little orchid to make sure that they're looking their best. All of mine look pretty good. It can sometimes get damaged. Orchids are fairly sturdy, but um, 
the petals can be prone to bruising. I'm gonna pull off one of the little lower orchid petals. If you're um, wanting to save this, just put it in a little tiny bowl for the day or two days, however long it lasts in a, maybe like a little um, sauce, tiny like sauce bowl and you can enjoy it a little longer. Add this tulip, or sorry, not tulip, this is an orchid. This is a dendrobium orchid, lovely purple color. I'm gonna put it more towards the front so I can see those blooms. And these, some of these will open up. These little babies probably are not going to open, unfortunately. I'm gonna clip off that little top piece, but we'll let as many of them open as possible. And then this one, I'm gonna stem split. So now I've got two pieces and I can just put this little buddy in the front. You could put one in the back, maybe one of the less dramatic ones. I do have to pull off this, these two pieces. So this guy will open and these two may open, but you could save these for just a couple days in a little bowl. Maybe put them on your dining room table or wherever you eat breakfast. And then you can um, enjoy that little bloom for just a little bit longer. Okay, we've got two more flowers to go. Um, let's add our blue carnations. Stem dye, mine are fully closed. Not fully closed. You can always peel them back just a little bit. When you have dyed stems, they do sometimes color the water. I cut that a little short, so I'm actually gonna shorten it up even more and just make it one of my belly button flowers. And then add another another little gesture over here. And that gives this guy the room to just splay open his petals. Tulips are kind of hidden, but that's okay. They will grow and pop their little heads out just a couple of days. And then we'll just add this blue Tweedia. So to clean this up, I'm adding this last because it's a little bit more delicate. Pull off the lower foliage. I'm preserving some of the top foliage because I think it's really pretty. And then I may just it in there right next to my carnation so I can kind of connect those two pieces so whenever you have these really long fun out there pieces you can connect them to the rest of the arrangement by putting something in that mid area and that's the negative space that you're filling up this little bit in front so you can see it. Ooh la la, what a fun, vibrant arrangement. My orchid got a little out of place there, so I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit. And then I do recommend change your water for this arrangement right away. Um, just so you can get all, any of that acacia foliage out of the vase. And then you're probably gonna wanna change your water a little more frequently than um, other arrangements that aren't stem dye. Um, just because the water can kind of absorb some of that, that dye. Thank you so much for joining me for another DIY floral arranging session. I love 
um, what we've made today. And I'd love to see photos of your arrangements. Um, if you'd like to post them on Instagram and tag them DIY Flowers for Dreams, um, we'll check it out and let me know what else you'd like to see in the comments. Bye everybody.